Welcome to Cannabis Health Radio, a podcast where we share stories from people around the world who are using cannabis as medicine. The information is meant to raise awareness about the health benefits of cannabis, but should not be taken as medical advice. Now, here are your hosts, Ian Jessup and Corey Yelland. And we are back. Welcome to another episode of Cannabis Health Radio. This is episode 288. I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Yellen. Our guest today describes cannabis as the most transformational, restorative, and most hopeful medicinal therapy. She's a medical cannabis nurse focusing on the use of medical cannabis as an alternative for some conditions many children are experiencing, such as autism, treatment-resistant epilepsy, cancer, behavioral conditions such as pediatric anxiety, depression, ADHD, and a condition called PANDAS. Joining us from Vermont is Vanessa Peck. Vanessa, good of you to do this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What What is PANDAS? So PANDAS is actually um, an acronym that stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders or Syndromes. Um, And what it is, is children who uh, are infected with a strep infection, whether it be strep throat um, or scarlet fever, rheumatic fever. And after they have these infections, they then develop a very severe form of OCD, ticks, sometimes tremors. Some of them will also have behavioral issues where they have anxiety. Um, All of a sudden, parents just see this drastic change in their child, a child that goes from some sort of normalcy, their baseline, their usual, to now having these severe issues. Um, Most of the time, it can be uh, resolved. It usually takes months with conventional therapies, but there still are children who, after going through the conventional therapies, are still just failing them and continue to have these issues after being infected with a strep infection. So cannabis is also um, being looked at as a possibility or an alternative that after these children fail these, you know, conventional treatments, um, that they're being treated with cannabis and it's being, it's showing some promise. Vanessa, what's the rate of um, kids that end up with pandas as a result of having a strep infection or rheumatic fever? It's not as common as you'd think, but we are starting to see it more. Um, th- there's still a little controversy around it too, where some people are saying, well, is it the chicken or the egg? Um, some people feel that there might have been something there already underlining, but it wasn't as severe. And then when the strep infection comes on, it seems to manifest in a more dramatic way. And other people disagree with that and say, no, my child was completely normal before this happened. And now um, now we're seeing these different manifestations in the child. Um, I think the statistic is one in every 200 we're actually seeing it happen. Um but we're not, it is, but we're not truly sure about the prevalence because again, we don't know if it's really being diagnosed appropriately because not all pediatricians believe in pandas. Some people are diagnosing pandas and some aren't. So whether or not those numbers are truly accurate, we're not sure because again, there's still a little controversy around it. Mm, But nonetheless, the issue is still there regardless. Oh yes. For sure, for sure. Um, and like I said, we're seeing kids that are that are being diagnosed after these strep infections with OCD, Tourette's, severe anxiety, some of them bipolar, um, some phobias. Like all of a sudden, the child just completely changes from what they were before before the infection. Mm. Vanessa, tell us the story of how you got into this line of work as a medical cannabis nurse. Sure. So I've. My experience is actually 12 years of ER experience where I've worked with both um, adult and pediatric populations. There was a period where I was just strictly pediatric ER. And about three years ago at this point, uh, I was working with a severely autistic child. And while the child was there, there was possibility that 
the child was going to have to be admitted to the hospital. And when we said this to mom, mom had said, you know, when we tell him, just so you know, there may be a possibility that he kind of goes into his meltdown. Sometimes they're easy to control, sometimes they're not, but we'll see what happens. And unfortunately, he was going to have to be admitted overnight. And as soon as we told him, um, he did exactly what mom had expected. You know, parents know their children very well. And he did kind of go into a meltdown where he was really pacing back and forth around the room. He was kind of yelling, very frustrated, had high anxiety. Uh, the ER physician had pulled me aside and said, you know, just in case I'm going to order some um, IV Ativan, and that's a sedative that you can put through the patient's IV to help them calm down. Um, I let mom know this. Mom said, had asked if we could hold off for now and that she actually had his CBD oil with her. Um, this was relatively new to me. Haven't really, I at that time didn't really come across it or parents using it for their children. And I had said, you know, mom, if that's what you want to do, that that's fine. I'll just, just let me let the ER physician know so we all know what's going on. And the ER physician that I was working with at the time, she's very accommodating when it comes to parents and children and listening to what parents want to do with their kids. And uh, she was okay with it. And mom gave him the CBD oil. And she had said, you know, if it doesn't work, it usually works in 15 to 20 minutes. But if it doesn't work, you know, we'll, we'll, do, we'll move to the Ativan. So she had given it to him. And I had gone on my way and continued taking care of the rest of my patients. And I would say probably about 25, 30 minutes later, I went over to check on them. And before I even entered the room, I could already hear how quiet it was. And I think mom could see my face when I walked in because I was so amazed you know, from what I, the situation that I had left 30 minutes prior and to, and what I had walked into was a drastic difference. He was now lying in bed, watching TV, laughing with his parents. And I was just amazed. And from there, I'd gotten into a conversation with mom, you know, about how this about, um, she had told me a little bit of a story about how um, they had been through the ringer over the years on multiple medications. You know, one medication would work temporarily, another one wouldn't work at all. Then the one that seemed to really work, you know, she said her child was just a zombie at that time and that just broke her heart. That wasn't her kid. You know, she was happy that it quelled some of the side effects or, I mean, quelled some of his symptoms, but now he was just this zombie. Then other medications, there's a lot of side effects and it was another medication for those side effects. So she really wanted to try to find an alternative and and find something that would really provide relief to her son, had done some research and came across CBD. And she herself decided, you know what, I'm going to try this and see how it works. I mean, what do we have to lose at this point? And she said it was the best thing that she had ever done because it was a drastic change in comparison to what they had experienced throughout the years. She said, you know, her son, she felt like she saw life in her son for the first time. He had better quality of life, not only for him, but for the family. Um, she said it was really, really just a godsend for them. And she, you know, while it's not a miracle, you know, these types of effects feel miraculous to families. So at that point, I had dabbled in the cannabis uh, medicine research just because it, it had interested me. And then it was more recently that I had actually came across a cannabis nurse on another podcast and didn't realize that there was anything that people were really doing in this field in terms of the nursing profession. And it just kind of all the light bulb went off. And it this is just has been my journey since. It's just the fact that I can try to help people in an alternative way. You know, conventional medicine is great. I've seen conventional medicine work at its best in the ER in the most acute situations, but I've also seen conventional medicine fail a lot of people as well. And I've always wanted to figure out how can I help people um, as, as much as I can in an alternative way uh, that supports our bodies uh, and really be able to touch as many people and help as many people as I possibly can. So that's really been my journey and how I'm here today. And your life changed forever. Yes, for sure. Tell me what the attitude is of your former colleagues towards medical cannabis. You know, some people kind of laugh at me like, yeah, okay, good luck with that. Um, you know, cannabis and kids, who's going to go for that? Um, but, you know, I let them say what they want to say. And at that point, I once I have a discussion with them and um, really educate them about what this is all about in terms of the endocannabinoid system, what cannabis can do, how when you supplement the body with cannabis and why the body reacts to it, especially if it's in a disease state. 
um, why we're seeing such great benefits and show them the science behind it, you know, then they start to kind of back off and get more interested in it. And then they start to see, you know, what this all really means. So there's still, even with my colleagues, some controversy because a lot of them still hold the stigma that has been created around it. Um, and you just really realize how much there, how many barriers there are to still overcome but the more we educate people with the appropriate information, I think we're going to keep continue to see those barriers come down. I think you're absolutely right because education is really the key to bringing cannabis to the forefront in terms of medical treatment. And I don't think your colleagues are any different than the general population in terms of how they feel about cannabis. Let me ask you a question about your business. When a parent contacts you, are you their last hope? Or do some forego conventional treatment and consider cannabis first? I have not had a parent yet come to me for cannabis first. It is definitely a last resort treatment. These are parents who have really been through the ringer with their child. Conventional medicine and conventional therapies have just failed them over and over. They're really frustrated. Depending on the condition of the child, you know, what condition the child's suffering from, some parents are even considering you know, having to place their child in a group home sometimes because they, they're literally at their wit's end. They don't know what else to do. And it's not that they want to do that, of course. It's just they don't know what else to do. And a lot of these parents feel like they've been to their clinicians, their child's clinicians. They feel like nobody's hearing them and they're not sure which direction to go. So this is definitely a very much a last resort. And they're very trepidous about using it as a last resort because of the stigma and the lack of education or the misinformation that's out there. Well, likely they're probably pretty scared. I mean, that's what I find with people who come to me. Um, they're scared of the legalities of it. Um, they're, you know, these kids often are really damaged already from all the pharmaceuticals. And uh, yeah, it's daunting. It's like stepping into an unknown world for them. That's very true. And and one way that I'm trying to overcome this, and, and hopefully it is successful, is I'm actually in the process of creating a course uh, for parents to try to educate them. You know, if they're they, they're interested in doing it, or maybe they're trying to do the research on it, but I mean, it is daunting trying to figure out CBD versus THC versus all these other cannabinoids, the endocannabinoid system, it gets confusing and it's overwhelming. And these parents are already overwhelmed to begin with, just with what they have going on with their child and just regular family life. Um, so I'm trying to create a course that will help educate parents and give them the, the best foundation that they need to make the best decision as to whether or not this is truly the right option for their child and their family. And I'm hoping with that, then from there, you know, they can seek out healthcare professionals, whether it's myself with my company or somebody else that can help guide them through the world of cannabis, where we can, you know, find possibly that the right combination of compounds for them, um, the sweet spot in terms of dosed, dosing, and uh, hopefully creating some symptom relief and creating this treatment plan that we can put into play. Vanessa, tell us how you go about determining the type of cannabis to give a child. So I tend to, depending on the symptoms that we want to quell, I mean, that's a big, uh, usually a, an indicator as to where we want to go. But also I tend to stick with the full spectrum where we know we're going to try to get the most out of the cannabis plant for the child. Um, from there, what we do is, you know, I, I tell parents why full spectrum is more beneficial, but usually the concern is that it may contain some traces of THC. So at that point, we may go to a broad spectrum where we're still getting um, all of the compounds that we want minus the THC. I do explain to parents, you know, that the THC, it's, it's not going to get their child high. It's not going to have that psychoactive effect, um, but we're still going to get the benefits of the THC. Um, and, you know, we try to determine, you know, what it will be the right product and which one, which product has, you know, a high level of terpenes and, um, you know, it, just to, to get the, the greatest benefit. The symptoms that we're trying to quell, uh, we kind of go from there, but I usually do not go over one part of THC. So usually I stick with a, 
a product that has that's going to be high in CBD and then a low dose of THC. So usually we wouldn't go under um, 10 parts of CBD to one part of THC for a child that may benefit from being on THC. And the reason for lower we or the lower we go with the CBD and then we have that we're going to see the psychoactive effects um, come into play and we don't obviously happen with the child, um, especially a child that time communicate uh, have, you know, be on the spectrum with the autism spectrum disorder. So usually we but the higher ratios of CBD and then just one part of THC. And usually we see uh, quite a bit of benefit, especially in children who have severe behavioral issues. You know, Vanessa, I think it's, it's important to be clear to, to listeners here who have some fear of THC that even the, even the CBD, and I'm going to use the term crap, that's being sold in 7-Elevens has um, 3% THC often. Because by law, you're allowed to have up to 3% THC in there. So it's such a small, minute amount of THC generally, I think, that kids are getting. Correct. And this is uh, and this thing that I stress to parents when we talk about like using a full spectrum oil for their child. And their first concern is, well, the THC. And, you know, I go through a thorough explanation saying, yes, there's THC, but it's less, it's 0.3% or less, which is not going to have that quote unquote psychoactive effect or that high that parents are concerned about their child having that it's such minute traces that we're, we're just not going to experience that. And then also teach them that even though there may be traces of THC in this CBD product, um, the CBD is the anecdote for THC. So CBD is what we use to continue to quell that quote unquote uh, high that everybody concerned about. You know, it's, it's about getting the benefits of the THC, but it's prevented because it's in trace amounts. And then the CBD on top of that also prevents that from happening. You know, Vanessa, I, I think it's important to just uh, interject here and say, not all CBD is created equal out there. So make sure you're getting a reliable uh, product when you're getting it. Yes, definitely. Thank you for saying that. That's actually one thing that I've been doing too is creating guides to provide for parents. You know, if you're shopping for a CBD, CBD product, what it is that you're looking for, labeling, the certificate of analyses, how can we determine a good product? That's because unfortunately... While cannabis is an amazing alternative, a lot of bad players out there as well. So we need to be able to identify the good products versus the bad products. Absolutely. Unfortunately, when parents are in public with their child and their child is maybe having that has some behavioral issues, I think a lot of the public just tends to look at and think it's bad parenting when in actuality there is a, a chronic condition that's that is taking place here They're struggling to get under control because of failed failed treatments for them um, or just not being heard by their clinician and just trying to find alternative methods that would provide relief these poor parents are literally at their wits end a day in their household or a day in their life is is very difficult and often these parents end up feeling isolated, alone. Um, they feel unheard. They don't have support. Some of them are lucky enough to have family support, but some of them are unlucky and their family members also think it's due to bad parenting and it's not completely the condition that the child may have. And uh, that becomes very frustrating and isolating for parents. So to be able to not only show them that there's a very viable alternative option for them, but also to them and show them that there are clinicians and other people that are out there that are hearing them and there to support them in whatever way that we can. Would you say some of these parents suffer from PTSD as a result of what they're dealing with? They could potentially. I think a lot of them definitely suffer from a lot of anxiety uh, issues with depression as well, just because of that isolating feeling that they get because of the situation that they're in and the stress that they have. You know, these parents are you know, balancing work with not only a child that may be suffering from a chronic illness, but also multiple children in their family that they're just trying to focus, um, 
whatever attention they can and whatever energy they have left to be able to invest in their entire family. You know, it's just, it's not just their child that they're stressed out about. It's just life in general. So I think we see a lot of parents have anxiety issues um, and some depression as well. Yeah, it's really tough to deal with. It Vanessa, I, you told the story earlier about uh, when you were in conventional medicine of dealing with this child in, in the ER and what CBD did for him. Tell me uh, some other stories about success cases that you've had. Sure. So we've had uh, a child who also had treatment-resistant epilepsy, uh, been on a number of medications, um, starting to move on to some off-label off -label medications that just had a list of side effects that really just scared the parents. Um, so we, they had come to me and we, we talked about doing some CBD, but more on the full spectrum. You know, we, we even talked about how uh, there is Epidiolex on the market, which is the synthetic form of CBD, uh, but they kind of feared it because they heard some side effects with it. And it while it worked really well with some children, it didn't work well with others. And just explaining, well, that's just because, you know, it could be, and maybe it didn't work for others just because it's a CBD isolate, meaning it's just the only compound that's that's in there. Um, and some children with these, these treatment-resistant disorders, uh, seizure disorders, tend to work better on a full spectrum because they're getting that full entourage effect, that effect where all the compounds are they work better in conjunction with one another rather than in isolation. Um, so we tried it out. It uh, would say within the first week, the child went from having 20 seizures a day to only having two seizures a week. And the parents were just amazed by it. They were like, we don't care. We'll take two seizures a week over 20 seizures a day where, you know, they, they had to be sleeping in the child's room, always worried if the child was going to experience a seizure then. Um, and just, you know, around the clock being with the child. And now their, their fears were starting to subside because they saw that there was relief for their child. One of the things that you deal with is pediatric anxiety and, and depression. Are, this might seem like a really dumb question, but I don't have uh, young children. So um, I want to know, is there a lot of depression out there in young people today? I definitely think there is. I think there's more anxiety and then that anxiety is leading to depression. Um, working in the ER, especially the pediatric ER, I can tell you that we had many cases of anxiety and depression and these kids having suicidal ideations from just outside pressures or because the anxiety was just so terrible and it was creating depression. And there are studies that have shown that since 2015 that the visitations to the ER by pediatrics has risen exponentially uh, for cases for anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. So it really is um, quite an issue out there. There's the, the numbers just keep skyrocketing. Any reason behind it? There's still a lot of theory as to what is causing it. Some um, studies have shown that potentially if parents suffer from anxiety and depression, just, you know, from societal uh, issues, you know, feeling pressures from family life, work, just trying to balance everything. You know, sometimes the parents develop anxiety and that is kind of a learned behavior from the child. Um, others say that it could potentially be social media, some of the uh, bullying and that's going on that sometimes we don't know about. Uh, but it's still, they haven't really pinpointed the exact issues, but these are working theories that they, they think are leading to uh, this increased number of cases. Yeah, I've heard of the social media issue, and I really, really feel sorry for some kids, young kids who get abused on social media. I mean, it can have a devastating effect on them, can't it? Oh, for sure. I mean, to for kids to be able to have that ability to hide behind something and be able to project all that negative, you know, uh, whether it's words or pictures, you know, it's, it's very devastating. And as a kid developing and all you want to do is fit in, you really take that all to heart and your parents could tell you otherwise, you know, that you're the greatest child, you're the greatest person, you're the most beautiful, smartest, you know, it's just not, it just doesn't seem to help because when your peers are just beating you up left and right, behind something like social media, um, it really takes a significant toll on these, these children. 
Vanessa, you have a website, correct? Tell us what it is. Yes, my website is uh, elevated-healing.com. Elevated-healing.com. Yes. Okay, now when you deal with clients, do you deal with clients uh, in person or is it online? It's online right now only because of COVID. Um, so we mm -hmm. usually do phone consultation. Some people I may do a video consultation if they would rather do that. Uh, but yeah, we're predominantly doing everything online just because of the situation with COVID. But I would like to be able to meet with people uh, in person as well. But being able to do it online is great because I'm able to expand and as help as many people as I, as I can. Vanessa, when you deal with uh, someone online and advise them to get a specific uh, type of cannabis for their children, where do they go? in the U.S. If, if a lot of states are illegal? So c CBD is actually federally legal. All 50 states, there are still a couple of states where the sale, selling of CBD products from brick and mortar is still illegal. So essentially, somebody out there in the U.S. that's creating CBD products can be sold, shipped to all 50 states. Um, it's just then finding which products are the cleanest, uh, have the uh, compounds that we're looking for, um, and something that's affordable for these families. You know, I mean, this is something that kids are going to need every month. Um, you know, the, based on dosage and frequency, we want to make sure that we're picking a product that's going to fill the profile that we need, but also is going to have the volume of medicine that they need at an affordable price. Um, so they can purchase from anywhere. It's just uh, some states still don't allow for brick and mortar sales. That's still illegal, but federally it's legal in all 50 states. Vanessa, when you deal with a client and you deal with them online and you, uh, do you have video contact with them or just audio? Uh, most, of the, most of it's audio, but depending on the parents, sometimes they prefer video, which we do once in a while. Um, but that's entirely up to the client and what their comfort level is. Uh, but usually most of the time it's audio. Has a parent ever recontacted you and say, thank you very much for what you've done. My child has made it an amazing transformation. I, I've had a, I've had a couple, yes, um, that were just amazed that it worked out for them. I've had a couple of parents where they've actually used CBD in the past on their own, but just didn't have any success with it. Uh, but just uh, tweaking what they were doing, whether it was dose and frequency, and then they saw the effects. I did. I have had a couple of parents that, you know, contacted me saying, "Thank you so much." You know, the quality of life that we're now experiencing, we never, we only imagined and never thought was possible. Um, so yeah, there have been a couple of parents that have reached back. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear. Give us your yeah. website again. Sure, it's uh, elevated-healing.com. Vanessa, it was great to talk to you. Good luck in the future. Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vanessa. It was wonderful to talk to Vanessa and we apologize for any technical difficulties. We're having a bit of trouble with Skype and uh, I understand that the Wi-Fi around the world in some parts is uh, not working correctly and I think today in the interview with Vanessa we had some problems with Skype so I apologize for that and hopefully by next week when we do another interview this will be rectified. Now, we'd like to thank our listeners for supporting us and sharing our podcasts with others who would benefit from these testimonials about the healing powers of cannabis, particularly, uh, particularly as it affects parents. Um, as a result of the podcast uh, we just completed with Vanessa Peck in Vermont. And parents who have children with issues and uh, it becomes very difficult for parents and uh, we would like anyone who has this issue to, uh, to maybe reach out and consider cannabis. Now, if you'd like to support us, there's a few ways you can do that. You can become a monthly supporter for as little as $5 a month on our Patreon page, or you can make a one-time donation for as little as five bucks by going to CannabisHealthRadio.com. 
And uh, Corey and I will be back next week. We took a bit of a break because uh, we were dealing with some health issues and uh, we are back on track right now. So that's great. And also, if you'd like to support us on YouTube and we want to increase our subscription on YouTube, just go to YouTube Cannabis Health Radio and hit the subscribe button and you get all our podcasts there. And we thank Mark in Belgium for posting our podcast. And we thank Ron here in Victoria for donating his studio time to us. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening to Cannabis Health Radio. For more information and to search previous podcasts, visit our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com. Subscribe so you don't miss new episodes. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This podcast is made possible by donations from our listeners. If you found the information helpful, please consider making a donation in any amount through our website. You can also help us share our message by leaving a review on your podcast listening platform. We are very grateful for your support. Thank you.